everything you need and nothing you don't. That was the tagline back in 2000 for the all new 2000 Nissan Xterra. Now this wasn't uh, Nissan's first small sport utility based on a truck platform. They actually made a vehicle as early back as 1993 called the Mistral. They could not use the Mistral name in the United States because that name had already been used by Maserati. All things X were all the rage back in 2000, and so they went ahead and made it the Xterra. The first generation of the Xterra was made uh, just in 2000 and 2001. After that, uh, different look uh, altogether with uh, round headlights in the front instead of square. This first generation vehicle, though, is still built and widely sold in China, where it is known as the Paladin. And for those of you who uh, don't know what the word Paladin means, uh, widely considered the greatest uh, king in the history of Europe. Charlemagne, his uh, top soldiers were called Paladins, and so that's where that word comes from. The Paladin has a little bit different front end. It uses the Nissan small pickup truck front end, but it's actually the identical chassis to this. This came out in uh, three different models back in 2000. An XC four-cylinder, and you can tell those because they have a manual transmission. XC six-cylinder and an SE six-cylinder. This is an SE six-cylinder here. You can tell those by things like moonroof and then the available features like chunky wheels, sidebars, roof rack, and so on. So this will be a top-of-the-line Xterra for 2000. And again, it's a truck. It's not uh, a crossover like a, like a Lexus RX is, for example. And so there aren't many of these uh, truck-based small Japanese sport utilities available on the market for even under $10,000 and so when you get one like this under $5,000 even though it's got a, a couple of rough spots here and there it actually can represent a really terrific value because these uh, get down to a certain price point where they just don't go any lower and even uh, one with a couple of bumps and bruises can represent a terrific value. So let's take a look around this particular car. I noticed a couple of bumps up here on the front. I mean nothing to write home about. Actually the front end for a 2000 vehicle with 170,000 odd miles is in really nice condition. And then looking along the side here, it's actually first class for the year. It's uh, looking really good. We haven't washed this or anything like that. Tires are a bit marginal, but overall the car stands tall, especially something uh, as inexpensive as this car is. And then as we mentioned, the uh, four-cylinder engine would come with a manual transmission, six-cylinder engine would come with an automatic transmission, and it's Nissan's 3.3 liter V6 engine. Seats are a little bit chewed up in here. Again, it could use a good, strong weekend detail, but the uh, again, it's actually, for how it looks just traded in, it's actually not half bad. Jumping into the back seat, now this is a compact sport utility, so I've got the seat nice and comfortable for me up front. In the back, two things. One, it's actually fairly roomy for a small sport utility. Two, they went to something that was novel back in 2000, and they call that theater seating. Theater seating is where the back seat is much taller than the front seat, and so you actually have outstanding visibility, and it doesn't feel like a small car in the back. Not at all, in fact. Taking a look in back, bumper area, here's your spare tire under here. The exhaust actually looks pretty decent. Uh, not a ton of rust uh, on the undercarriage or anything like that. It's pretty sound. Again, for a 2000 vehicle with 170 odd thousand miles. CD changer right here in the back. I can see the carpets peeling back a little bit here. And again, it could use some strong detail work, but these are pretty simple fixes in the uh, grand scheme of things. And then as we take a look in the passenger side, I can see through the window here that there's actually a uh, crack in the windshield. So uh, whoever buys this car is gonna wanna replace that windshield. But passenger side looks just as nice as the front side. This right here, I can tell you, uh, this is loose right here. And so when this car makes a sharp right turn, you hear, I don't know if it's rubbing against this or maybe some other drop down piece of plastic, but you can hear some rubbing of plastic against tire when you make a sharp right turn. Let's jump inside and turn it on. Nissan's Xterras have been made all over the world. They're still made all over the world. In fact, uh, new uh, from 2000 to 2007, these were also made in Brazil. Uh, today, not only is the Paladin made in China, but the current issue Xterra is still built in Iran for its regional marketplace. Pretty nice layout. Again, it's uh, 179,224 miles. No check engine light or anything like that. No smoke billowing out of the engine compartment. Nothing at all like that. I see a couple of maybe uh, scratches up in here, but the dash looks clean and nice. This uh, little piece of uh, material, just easy off. And the 
Short of a detail, it's actually not looking half bad. I know a lot of these stereos can be funky. Let's turn this one on. No, not bad at all. Air conditioning, all your HVAC controls, pretty straightforward. Cruise control, leather wrapped steering wheel. Moonroof, I mean, it's a loaded car. That's a great off-road vehicle. It's a fun second vehicle. Maybe it's a fun first vehicle. It's a, something that should last quite some time if you don't mind investing a couple of bucks in some elbow grease uh, month to month on an older vehicle. It's the kind of uh, vehicle that honestly, you could sell it for all of what you bought it for, or pretty close to what you bought it for. Not even months down the road, even years down the road. Small sport utilities with uh, true off-road prowess. They just don't depreciate past a certain point. So again, for a real smart buyer, this is actually a super, super intelligent choice. And if you have any questions about this vehicle or Xterra is in general, please don't hesitate to give me a call. My name is Joe Tunney. I'm the sales manager here at Infinity of Kirkland. You can call me anytime, 425-821-1600, or just drop me an email at joet at infinityofkirkland.com.